the only ritual that I have is not right before the gig, it's sort of two, three days before, and, and you go through your music like any person should do, really, but no, there's no real rituals, there's no voodoo in my sets. There's a rough pattern, I suppose, which is, you know, get the weekend out of the way, get home and kind of uh, try, try, and, um, try and get over my tiredness and then get in the studio and then start to I think about travelling again on Thursday. But beyond that, you know, it can be anything. And, and it, quite well, at the moment, it seems to be that I, I keep getting remixes that kind of come out of thin air and need to be delivered in like two days and things like that. So that throws everything in disarray and you make plans like I'm... I'm frantically at the moment I'm, I'm putting releases in on my, my label, Intimacy. Um, I mean the label that I run now is called Apple Pips. Um, previously I ran a label called Skull Disco with a chap called Shackleton. Um, but we've kind of stopped that now after 10 releases, kind of felt that it's kind of run its course and I kind of wanted to sign tunes that I've been playing out and that have been doing really well for me. So it's really just like good quality electronic dance music hopefully of, of many different genres so it could be dubstep it could be garage it could be house it could be techno just anything that I think is, is good basically you know and I'm putting the time aside to, to do the remixes for them and then other things come in and it all goes to pot so you need to just basically be open to anything changing at last minute at the last minute it's organized chaos probably <laughs> DJ's lineup actually, because we've got um, yeah, Busy P, Maddie T of Schwartz. I haven't heard Woody for ages. God, he's always, um, he always surprises me whenever I hear, I, mean, I always know he's going to be good, but he always plays something and surprises me, and that's what the, he's the quality street DJ in that respect, so yes, him. No, he does, he plays brilliant music, and then there's something like you go, oh my God, I can't believe he played that, and it sounds really, really good. When I started to do those edits, it was, the idea was, it was to make kind of older and, and quite, big, you know, huge records, to make them more kind of accessible so that, so that I could kind of play them in my own way but now that's evolved into um, editing new records which is really important and so that that's um, that's just become a whole a whole separate thing yeah well I want to catch Paul Wolford his name's not actually Paul Wolford honest to god it's not actually Paul Wolford it's Herschel Herschel's Jewish name so he changed his name to be a little bit more uh, accessible within the DJ world so Herschel Wolford. I, I don't actually think it's Wolford, I think he made that bit up as well, but who knows. Saw a little bit of Alfredo, which is obviously, you come to Ibiza, you want to see someone like that who's been involved since the beginning, you know. Um, James Aviella as well. Do you know what I mean, I'm just here to like soak it all up, really. Funny you should say that, because um, just as I was getting to the airport today, uh, it's about six in the morning, seven in the morning, I put my bag on there and it was overweight. So she was like, right, you're going to have to pay extra. I said, fine, OK, hold on, let me see if I can just take this. And there's some vinyl that I brought out for Alfredo. And uh, obviously that was the bit that was the overweight bit. Next thing I know, Alfredo standing next to me at the checkout next to us. So I took the records out and gave them to him. Great story. Had like this little ring and it was an acid house, smiley face. Are you Matthew, do you know where this is from? It's the acid house logo, yeah? He said, in 1984, I had a friend that was Italian and he worked for a charity. It was a children's charity. 
And do you know when charities organisations give you a sticker? Well, that was the sticker. And it was 1984, and he brought back to Ibiza from Italy books and books of those acid house stickers. So and he stuck them around. Now we've got the t shirts. <laughs> a wealth of music, considering no one's actually <laughs> buying music anymore, but the amount of amazing music that's being produced is, is extraordinary. I get records every week. There's new records every week, but sometimes there are records that are not, um, there, there are records that are not kind of suitable for, for the room, and it's, it's very particular playing on the terrace. So there's, um, there's a lot of records that I'll get which I want to play them, but they're not quite right. So sometimes that means it'll 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 mean that something will either need re-editing, in which case you know you can mould it and make it into the sort of record that's going to suit the room, or it'll be something that you just have to leave and not play. So you, you basically, I need to keep whilst I keep my ear open for new records all the time, but I also need to keep my ear, my ear open for new records that are particularly suit that room. Been times when I've, I've not even played anything on my own during the night, but it's it's whatever suits the moment. I'm kind of like I'd rather I'd rather play records that suit the moment than try and crowbar my latest productions in no matter what, which is kind of sometimes what some DJs do, and it kind of like sometimes feels a bit clumsy. But um, but yeah, it's, as long as it suits the moment, then you know I'll I'll, uh, I'll play it. I believe that everybody in the world is good at something and if they have people around them that go just find what you want to do and do it, then, then they can do it and that, that's it for me really, it's, it's this. To see people um, initially when you first play a record they don't react to it and then a few weeks later it's one of the records that they go nuts to, you know, it's really rewarding as a DJ and I guess that's, in a lot of ways that's why you become a DJ because you want to, to introduce music to people and, and um, the the joy of discovery. I think I'd, I'd bore everyone into submission and the club would be emptied. Oh! Fine, <clears throat>